So just a little reminder, it's June and uh, this month is going to be full of uh, getting stuff uh, ready for the engine to run and that includes the cars. These are, this is one of the truck assemblies out from under the old tool car. That's this green car here that we used on a lot of trips and including the Huntington trip uh, back in 1991. Remember it uh, on the excursion trains then and it last ran in 2005 on a train, I believe the one up to uh, up to Gay uh, to Grayling, and that was about it. And now it's just been used for storage ever since. And then the, the combine here pretty much took over for it. We hadn't really gone that far with the engine other than uh, Cadillac. So 1225 hasn't used its original tool car that amount of time. It's just moved around here on the property as storage. We took most of the tools out of it and put them in the shop here uh, once the rebuild commenced on the locomotive. So, our, one of our uh, main points is to get this thing going again and use it in conjunction with the combine which would be used for shorter runs as well as a crew car on the longer runs with the tool car. Or at least that's my understanding of it as of right now is to use them together. I think we'd keep it green. My idea would be more of a John Deere green or maybe just clean this part up and do it the same kind of green. It's a little bit darker than John Deere but it still would pass for MOW if we ever want to do a photo char with it or something. We just add the yellow handrails. I believe it originally had yellow handrails when they turned it MOW. It's originally a World War II troop sleeper built by, uh, I believe this one's a Pullman. ACF also did troop sleepers as well. And this one was turned into a baggage car slash uh, uh, MOW tender in the, uh, I believe the late 50s. They weren't using these cars anymore to carry troops around the country pretty much after Korea. They uh, switched to more streamlined cars, kind of like our gift shop car or the uh, museum cars that we used to have that we sold to the 765 group. Now they look kind of like box cars, and after the war, a lot of them were converted into regular box cars by uh, doing up the windows and the doors, which are in the middle, like this one, like that, and cutting a big door inside just uh, playing over all of this stuff including the ends and taking off the diaphragms but this one and many others just turned into baggage cars this one was specifically uh, targeted as MOW that's why the end the door is more closer to one end and on the other side it's on the opposite end and uh, they uh, add different kinds of step grabs all over the place just to mark it as different too and part of the thing is, these cars originally came with Allied Full Cushion Truck. These are, we just placed under here today, are just regular uh, uh, AAR type uh, roller bearing trucks that you'd see under a 100 ton freight car. These over here that I just showed you are the original ones, the Allied Full Cushion Trucks. And uh, they get their name because the springs are right inside the frame and the bearing pretty much just rides on those. Had the heck of a time getting out there because it was originally built as a pasture car and pasture cars had more attachments to their trucks. So this one had more than just a pin in it to hold it in. You had a bunch of uh, like slat type bars going across. It was a, what was it? It's a, it's a groove pin and the, uh, the slat bar kind of like that thing there. I think that's the cutting of it. We had to cut it out and pull it. I mostly just watch because they told me to give them some tools so that was pretty much the extent of what I had to do there while the real professionals went about it cutting that out. And you can see just like on any pasture car the brake rigging on these trucks is uh, on both sides of the wheel as they are most, uh, our most class brake type uh, uh, trucks used for pasture cars. 
disc brakes just uh, the disc is on the inside so they only have the one shoe so they don't need two shoes on each wheel so this these are the or original trucks from what we could tell I believe they're from 1943 around the time the car was built and they weren't necessarily built for comfort, but this is the best they could do for the kind of car that was. I mean, they're only carrying troops uh, to the destination points on the port, uh, port sides of the country. And, yeah, they've done pretty well the last uh, 65, uh, almost 70 years now. So they've seen a lot of action, but we're looking to replace them. I guess there's a deal in the works, that's why we took them out to get some newer trucks in there. These roller bearing trucks are not what's going to sit under there. That was originally talked about back about 10 years ago when the when we thought the locomotive was going to go to uh, Baltimore uh, to the 150th uh, anniversary uh, well I think no it was 175th anniversary of steam in America at the roundhouse before the roof fell in there but it was going to be too expensive but now we got a pair of trucks, I guess, they are in the works to be traded with those, the full cushion trucks. But they're not going to be roller bearings, from what I'm told. They're going to be just solid bearings, but they'll be easier to work on, I guess. And uh, more, like, more like regular trucks than it would be to uh, take apart another set. But these ones are temporary, and hopefully the new set... Since they're, evil, since they're able to work on them a little bit, bit better, will help us get Amtrak certified all our cars in the, uh, in the roster here. So that's what we're looking at here. The uh, other trucks, I'm not sure what they did with those. They, they might be on the other side. We'll see in a moment. But yeah, he put those trucks together, and uh, we rolled these ones out from under it. So it's going to sit there. The springs aren't quite sitting because th this car isn't heavy enough to push them down all the way. And it's it's not, none of the brake rigging is hooked up. So we said uh, straight track only. So we just push it over here and uh, to get out of the way until the new trucks come. Well, new, the used trucks come. Anyway, I don't think I mentioned this last time. I don't, I don't remember if they are out here in May. But here's some of the arch bricks that are going to go uh, on the siphons to arch across there and in the firebox of the locomotive and here's some more pieces some of these are uh, for the siphons themselves and uh, going over here let's see if those trucks are over here yep here they are yeah basically the same thing yeah, still trying to spread some of this uh, sand and ash out. Trying to get that. There's a little base here. The weeds sure came up, and I had to take the mower and a swisher trimmer. You know, that's kind of like a DR trimmer. You know, it's on wheels and it cuts a, cuts a big brush down. It was kind of bogging down the stuff we had there. Grew up really fast in the last three weeks. It's pretty bad. Gotta try and wee whack around the tracks now really need to, uh, to take those tracks out and redo them. They're kind of aiming towards the river instead of being up on an embankment where they should be. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, these trucks uh, are uh, ready to be sent out here and trade with the n newer ones. As you can see, all the rigging is still on there. And uh, you just see this rod here and uh, see how the brakes clasp like that, just like on any other truck. And that kind of springs back when you let go. So, it's all attached in there. So almost like a freight car truck, only on both sides of the wheel. So more like a passenger car truck. These pedestals here sat on those, uh, roll on the top of the roller bearing trucks, uh, crossbar had to cut those off so that you can get them underneath the car and over there's the old cab floor and more brake shoes over here don't know when he's gonna put that cement pad in
but now from what I'm told that uh, that big uh, hoop house uh, tent that we got covering our uh, miscellaneous parts over on the other side there is going to go over here and cover the machines that are supposed to go on the new cement pad when we get that poured. So then once again there are the machines. Hopefully we'll get them out of there ASAP and get them running again. So yeah. Busy month and you saw the locomotive in the last two videos and we're just going to see how things are going to go with the rolling stack here. We got to finish painting the uh, second pasture car that we got part way done uh, last fall before it got cold. He said he's got to get the painter out here but he wants him to paint the locomotive and get more of that finished before he finishes the pasture car. We really got to start hurrying now. Summer is pretty much here and we want to get the locomotive uh, running and tested before we reveal it for the big day. Uh, which hopefully will be around Halloween time that we're thinking if we get that money raised. So yeah, this this thing here hopefully be on the move to the other side to cover the machines once we get the pad poured. And of course we gotta move all that stuff out from under it and get stored away or run again or sold, something like that. I mentioned uh, last month in a video about the uh, the uh, miniature railway that the container will be moved over here and we'll build more tracks to it and we'll get it going uh, for the next uh, big event hopefully coming up next year still planning on it, we gotta get that locomotive running and another big step is getting all these uh, tu uh, the uh, tubes here done those are the super heater tubes remember they were in the pile over here waiting to get tested and now they're all over there closer to the hose all spread out and ready to go and get tested and hopefully put back in the locomotive now that the tubes are in there and that's about it for right now okay everyone I gotta get going home close this place up okay till next time <laughs>